Is this Sal? Yeah. Hey, Sal. Zach Noble, how are you? How you doing, Zach? Doing great. Are you good to go now? Yeah, I'm good. Awesome. I got my partner, Ryan, on the phone as well. What's up, Sal? How's it going, Ryan? Not too bad, man. And, hey, do you prefer Sal? Is that cool? I know it's Kicks or Domus, but we're going to... I want to get that right. Yeah, Sal's fine or Kicks. It doesn't really matter, but Sal's cool. Kicks. I like Kicks. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> That's what uh, Kat calls me, so yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, we're going to do our intros and bring you right in. Sound good? All right, sounds good. All right. Welcome back to the Four Seasons Show. I am Ryan Mogdrosh alongside Zach Noble. Joining us over the phone today, Kickstradamus. Kicks for short. Kicks, what's up, man? What's shaking, man? What's up, guys? How's it going? Not too bad. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Kickstradamus on Instagram, if you don't know him, first of all, you're probably living under a rock. Yeah, and you're not too inclined <laughs> with the NBA shoe landscape. Customizing NBA players, NFL players, celebrities' shoes that they wear in games or just casually. First of all, how did you get started in the shoe game, and what kind of inspired you to start customizing your own shoes? Uh, it was it was kind of an accident, to be honest with you. It was never really planned that I was just going to start painting shoes and take take it to you know the next level of my career. Um, I was kind of going through a hard time at first, actually, and uh, one of my cousins asked me if I could because uh, I have an art background since I was four years old. Uh-huh. Wow! So uh, one of my cousins, I was living on my cousin's couch. And this was like six, six and a half years ago, uh, living on my cousin's couch, struggling. I have a son, you know, so I had to find a way to make ends meet. And, uh, my cousin asked me if, uh, if I could fix his Jordans. (laughs) Yeah. It all started with me restoring shoes. And I continue to do research on how to do certain things. That's when I ran across a few pictures of people painting pictures on shoes and I, I, I literally just thought to myself, I could do that. So that's well, at first, what you were fixing busted shoes. So you weren't even customizing them with art in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't even customizing. I was actually just restoring shoes. I gotcha. That's amazing. Well, what age was your first pair of shoes that you did art, from an art perspective? The first pair of shoes? Uh, you mean how long ago? Or? Yeah, what, how old were you? I was probably 25, bro. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, 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 I'm 31 now, so it was, it was definitely in that in that time frame. What made you want to get into it at 25 then, if you were doing all this other sort of art? Well, I was doing a lot of art, but it was very successful. Um, and uh, I was struggling. I needed money. So, you know, I tried it out, and it worked out. I like that. So what do you remember the first shoe you ever drew on or the first shoe you ever customized, specifically the exact pair and what you drew? A pair of Chucks. And it was, uh, yeah, it was a regular That's show, memorable. regular show custom on one side. And it was like a koi fish on the other side. All right. <laughs> I like that. Very good. That's awesome. So now let's talk about the NBA landscape. How did you break into the shoe business there? What was your first pair like and first athlete you worked with? Uh, as far as in the NBA? Yes. Or Bass. Paul Anthony Towns, man. Uh, he was the first he kinda, one? He kind of resurrected my career, yeah. So what happened? Like, did he come to you specifically, or is it something where you approached them? Well, actually what happened was um, I was in a car accident, and um, the doctor said I couldn't paint anymore, so I had to, I had to stop painting for a full year. And uh, I kind of went through a depression because I wasn't making money anymore. I was struggling, uh, you know, disappearing off social media for a mm-hmm. full year. You lose all momentum, so it gets it gets pretty tough. You so, know, I had to sw- I had to swallow my pride and get get this whole this uh, full time warehouse job. So Carl and, Anthony uh, Towns revived you. 
yeah, you know, uh, I, I get this 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 uh this full time warehouse hard labor job really sucks. I'm not getting paid enough, but no. I start I start to realize how much I hate it, and you know, I start having thoughts like, should I get back into it? Should I should I really take this leap? So I jump back on social media, and uh, for the first time in a year. I jumped back on social media and I realized that Cat, Hassan Whiteside, um, Fabulous, and a lot of people, wow. a lot of influential people are following me after a full year of me being gone. <laughs> wow, they are, uh, they're the OGs. Yeah, man. And, and, and I'm a, it's crazy because I'm a huge NBA fan. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of the game. And uh, just, uh, you know, seeing Cap was following me i was like i gotta shoot my shot and send him a dm and see if yeah. he's, uh he wants to get some work done that's amazing and that uh, yeah within a week i was chilling with him at his his summer crib in la and uh we were just sitting down for like four hours just talking shoes and all kinds of stuff he wanted to fill me out and he decided it was the perfect fit that's so special man cat's my guy i love cat so tell me this i mean I know I know all the influential shoes you've done for Cat. I mean, they're pretty memorable. You got Mac Miller, Flip Saunders, um, two guys that hit home for me as well. But what was that first pair like? Uh, just colorful, or was it did it have meaning behind it like those other ones? Uh, the first pair definitely had meaning on it. It was a, a pair that he wore for his uh, for his. Uh, I guess they had an alma mater like. Reunion game. Yep. And uh, he wore a uh, Love Trump's Hate pair. So it was <laughs> uh, against racism, and it uh, kind of created a lot of yeah. buzz. So, I remember that pair. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, already knew, I already knew where things were headed just from seeing the, you know, the buzz that was created around that pair that wasn't even during the season. So Right. So you customize shoes for players, and Cat is your guy. He's the first one. He's the OG. Other than Cat and outside for other athletes, do you still keep in touch with them and hang out with them outside of work just like you do with Carl Anthony Towns? I, I definitely hang out with a lot of these guys. Um, Carl Anthony Towns is like one of my best friends, and really? it kind of snowballed from there. Uh, I'm friends. I'm really close friends with Donovan Mitchell. Uh, I'm, uh, I do a lot of stuff with uh, with James Harden. So it's been it's been really crazy. It's been a fun ride, and it's only been two years, wow. which is the craziest part. That is wild, and your I feel like your potential is not even close to being touched yet. Ah uh, man, that's, that's always good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Great to hear. So tell walk us through this. I mean, what is your process like as to how players reach out to you? Um, are the players always super involved in on this, or yeah, what, what's that process like for you? Is it all word of mouth, or how do these players come to you? It's really crazy, man. And sometimes I'll just wake up to a few texts from different guys out of nowhere, like, "Yo, this uh, this guy told me to text you" or something like that. But uh, or in, in my my direct messages on my Instagram. But for the most part, a lot of these guys they'll just give me a theme, or they'll just give me full artistic uh, freedom, and uh, you know, just to know that they trust me to that point is is, is definitely awesome. Now, have you ever had to remake a pair of shoes? Like, you, they didn't turn out the way you wanted or the person you're doing them for? Um, you ever had to remake a pair multiple times? Uh, I've been very fortunate to where I haven't. Wow. Had to do that. <laughs> One takes all you need. That's unreal. Yeah. <laughs> so you made some sick customized LeBrons for our guy, Myers Leonard. He's a friend of the show. He's been on. We play Fortnite almost every Monday, Thursday. But... The Rose and the 77 Portland Custom Black. I think they're, what, LeBron 15s? One of my favorites. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Those, those, were actually, those were actually done on an episode of my new show that's about to drop. This yeah. Time. Yeah, so that, that, those are really fun. We'll talk about that show in a minute here, but um, with those shoes, th those are a Paul Allen edition, weren't they? 
They they are. Yep. Yeah. No, they were amazing. They were one of my favorite pairs you've ever done. Um, we talked about that on social a little bit, actually. I think that's how we, we got introduced here. Uh, but outside of the Paul Allen, I talked about the Mac Miller, the Flip Saunders, a lot of these condolences shoes that have been unbelievable, some of my favorite pairs you've ever done. Um, what are some of the most meaningful and favorite shoes you've ever made? Man, that definitely has to be one of them. Uh, there's been quite a few. I mean, the Flip Saunders project was just amazing, you know, to be able to be part of that and everything was auctioned off for charity after. Uh, there's a number of pairs, you know. It's, you want to know my favorite pair that you've ever made? What, what is your favorite pair? You made a pair made? of Hakuna Matata Ricky Rubio <laughs> yes. shoes that I'm obsessed oh, with. Oh, are you talking about the ones for Ricky Rubio? Yes, those are sick. <laughs> okay. Good call. <laughs> so he came to yeah. you and, and said, hey, I like Lion King. Will you make me something that's Lion King yeah, themed or what? Yeah, he was like, I want something Lion King because of their, their, you know, their jerseys are uh, the same, same color. Uh huh. Yeah, so I was like, I could play with that. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah their city jerseys have like the, the yellow fading into red. And on these shoes, we'll show them on the screen right now. It's like a uh, a sunset theme with the, uh, I think it's Timon and Puma, is it not? Right. Yeah. On one side with the sunset, red and gold. It is, it's sexy. Yeah, it, it, it was a lot of fun creating. I, I love creating nostalgic stuff like that. I mean, I already know it's going to create a, a lot of buzz. And, uh, you know, I just try to do the best I can. Ryan, did you see Josh Hart's Fortnite kick? Oh, my gosh, yes. Those are another one of my favorite ones. Put Josh Hart's face on a Fortnite character. And you have the gamer tag over there. It's said eliminated by Josh Hart Nova. Oh, yeah, that that was huge. Look. So there's a funny story behind that pair. Let's hear it. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm partially colorblind. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. And uh, me being partially colorblind, it kind of creates a little bit of a challenge sometimes. <laughs> I would say so. It's not, it's not like I see black and white, but what there's co- certain colors when they're together that I can't really differentiate which colors which and stuff like that what, so. what colors are they it, it's several actually there's like browns and greens and blues and purples and like different shades that that you know that aren't too close to to each other yep. but they're close enough yeah I, I start to start to get lost with it so and, they uh, blend was, together or how do you get over that obstacle <laughs> luckily i got you know names on my paint <laughs> oh, that's but, good. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but I, I, for the most part, I try to have somebody look over it real quick before I, yeah. you know, finalize. Like, hey, this is not brown. I'm this is pretty uh, good. Purple. I've been able to challenge myself. Yeah, I've grown pretty Jeez. good at that. But on that specific pair, it was a picture of Josh, and I painted it. It looked awesome. I sent it to him, and I sent it to to his brother, which is my which is my manager. And I was like, Yo, what you what you think? And he was like, that's awesome, but are you, are you going to keep his face green? <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. That's great. I had no idea. So yeah. that just blows my mind. I mean, being colorblind to that many colors, and yet you've never had to remake one shoe. I mean, you must just have, like, the perfect layout and structure ahead of time. I mean, it, probably a lot of planning goes into it, or is it just you got the sense? He's Kickstradamus for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man i mean it's 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 really crazy I, a lot of people a lot of people don't know that i'm partially colorblind and a lot of people don't understand the struggles that i've gone through to get here you know a lot of people just see somebody doing well and they just think they were just either born into it or it just i don't know i, I really don't know the thought process behind that but so yeah Outside of customizing and your own artwork, what is your favorite pair of shoes all time? Yes. Not just to customize on, but just wearing. Just my favorite pair? Mm-hmm. Yeah, your period. Uh, it's crazy because uh, there's been quite a few that, that would come out, and I'm just like, yo, I love this shoe. But now I have, like, a new favorite pair that, you know, I just really like. And yeah. I, 
it's the it's the Kyrie, the Lucky Charm Kyrie oh, yeah. that just came out. Those are pretty <laughs> like, sexy. Those like, are I don't know why. It's just like that's like my favorite pair. I have a lot of expensive pairs, but that pair is just it's just my favorite. So yeah. have you customized any of those, the Lucky Charm Kyries, or will you not touch those? I, I have my pair, and I, I might I might color in the the marshmallow. Uh, the whites pieces in there yeah i might just put that in there but other than that that yeah that's my favorite pair all right of tell me so my favorite pair of shoes in the world basketball wise oh. are lebron ones the yeah, very those. first pair he ever wore as an nba player <sighs> have you got your hands on those and were able to customize those at all in your career uh, which ones? I'm sorry, you were cutting off a little bit. Which My pair? Bad. The LeBron ones, the very first pair that he's ever worn in the NBA. Oh, okay, the first LeBrons. Uh-huh. I, 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 no, I never got that pair. Uh, I'd never worn them. Uh, I was a huge Kobe fan, so I didn't support LeBron. <laughs> Love it. So you picked Kobe <laughs> over LeBron. Uh, yeah, I mean, now, now that you know, it's further in his career. I he's think in LeBron LA now. Is- Are you in LA? I'm in L.A., but I, I, I honestly think LeBron is the best to ever play the game at hey, this point. you and me both, yeah. brother. And I'm not with you guys, but we'll save that so for So what are we talking day. about? Are we talking about like a custom Four <laughs> Seasons LeBron 1's colorway coming up soon? <laughs> that would be Oh, sick. yeah. We'd have to, how long does it normally take you to do, do a pair? Uh, time is really – it all depends. I mean, there's some that are pretty fast, and then there's – pretty fast being like an hour and a half to oh, two wow. hours. Sometimes there's some that take about six hours, but I've been able to pump out about 15 pairs for the NBA in one to two days. Sometimes <laughs> it's kind of crazy. That's some serious yeah. work. <laughs> no sleep, no sleep. It's very hard because I still have to juggle my regular client orders and stuff. So it's, it's a lot of work, man. Yeah. It's so definitely a grind. You got this new show that you mentioned that we cannot wait to talk about with That's Complex and Yahoo, if I'm not mistaken. Kicking yes, it sir. with Kickstradamus. What's that about? November 27th, if I'm correct. November 27th, kicking it with Kickstradamus. So, you know, for those of you that have watched TV in the past, it's kind of like a mashup of kind of something like MTV Cribs meets west coast customs but based around <laughs> shoes and i'm not only the artist but i'm the host of the show so that's cool there's a uh, 20 episodes wow. 20 episodes long yeah it's, it's, it's a big one so and, uh, each episode do you go to like uh, a client's house i go to house a different and... crib i go to a different crib yeah wherever they were staying for the summer uh, here in Cali, go to their crib. They show me around and then uh you know we t- we talk about well they show me where i'm going to work on this specific shoe and they give me kind of a theme and, and I just kind of kick them out of their house. And <laughs> I, surprise, I, I surprise them in the end. <laughs> so who are we talking about here? Who are some, uh, some guests? Oh man. We got, so we got my bro, Carl Anthony Towns. We got my boy, Josh Hart. Uh, Kelly Uber is also one of my, my, my mm-hmm. good guys, Lance Stevenson, uh, Robert Woods. We go into the NFL as well. So we got Robert Woods, Akeem Tlaib, Man, this is, the list is crazy. That, that is a hair. phenomenal list. Couple Jayhawks on there, love it. Oh man, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a crazy list, bro. But uh, it's it it was a lot of work. Uh, twenty episodes is crazy to cram in. Like like we pretty much put twenty episodes in in like three months almost. Jeez, I would like to say. that's wild. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was a lot of work. I, I see how much uh, where people actors put in and stuff now and then i have a different you know respect for it now but uh yeah man, i'm definitely looking forward to it. it's gonna be huge and uh it's just the beginning excited to plug in um how did the show come about did they approach you or what happened there it's funny i, I was doing a project with the clippers and uh doing this project with the clippers um they they showed me mad love you know they invited me to a game i did this pair for downtown la clipper night yeah I, I went out there and then they put me on the jumbotron and they played this like minute piece on the jumbotron during the game uh showed me mad love and uh after that that same night i got an email from a director brandon uh 
And Brandon uh, was like, yo, you know, I saw your piece and I feel like there's something special here and uh, let's talk about it. And, uh, you know, you fast forward now and he's the guy that, you know, filmed my show. That's so cool, man. Beautiful. Kicking it with Kickstradamus, November 27th. The Kickstradamus, thank you for joining us on the Four Seasons show today. Sal, really appreciate you guys. Really appreciate it, man. It's going to be fun following that show and following your progression of your career here. Keep grinding, man. Appreciate you guys, man. Uh, hopefully we catch up soon. Yep, Absolutely. Definitely. Take care. You too.